I want to turn your attention first today to Chris Packham's comments about protesting outside MPs' houses. Now, for me, at first glance, that issue is a no-brainer. It's it's a no-go zone, actually, um, uh, to use a phrase that Paul Scully has managed to bring back into public discourse it, shortly before turning Westminster into a no-go zone for himself by announcing that he won't be standing at the next election. But I, 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 I've always thought that is one line we do not cross as a society. But the first text to come into the programme this morning are these. One from Anthony in Surrey, one from Michael in Fulham. I think if MPs use their role, writes Anthony, to enhance their personal life over the interests of the public, then the public should be able to protest in a way that affects the MPs' personal life. And in the same moment, both at 10.02 this morning, uh, Michael writes, if the politician is a lying, lazy scrounger like Johnson or any of his crooked gang, then protest outside their homes is acceptable. They treat us like sewage. It should work both ways. Um, The problem with both of those perspectives, lads, is that you don't get to decide whose home is fair game and whose home isn't. I think once you've allowed... Once you've ignited the green light, then even the politicians you consider to be honest and honourable and dripping with integrity become fair game and become their homes become targets for the people that you would find um, problematic at best and repellent at worst. I thought, well, listen, to me, Chris Packham is obviously wrong. You, you can't protest outside someone's home. But maybe that's because I don't actually care enough. Are there issues now from which politicians appear to be so completely distracted, detached from where you sit and where you feel the people sit that you should actually be able to take the fight to their front doorstep?